Hi, I'm Janelle with Tunes Unlimited, and for this video, um, I decided to show you some how I make some of my facial expressions. So this guy right here is Dexter, and I originally planned for Dexter to just to be a um, a single view or a single angle character. However, um, I kind of like this guy, and so I decided I'm going to go ahead and convert him into a G2. So what you see here are basically the three core angles you need to make a um, symmetrical character. Because when it comes down to it, um, once you have these angles done, you basically flip them and you'll have the other side of the turnaround. And then from there, you're just focusing on the back angles, which really doesn't require a lot of um, work because the um, the whole um, facial features are hidden, so you don't have to work on a ton of eye expressions or eyebrow or mouth expressions. So in this case, um, I normally start my characters on the zero degree angle, but because I was building a um, single view character, I drew him on the 315. So now that I'm trying to convert him, there's a few things. I love to recycle work because it saves a ton of time. And in this case, I'm gonna be recycling the eyebrow expression, um, the eyes, and some of the mouth. And what I mean by that is this mouth has, um, it's dynamic. It moves, the jawline moves up and down. And in order to achieve that, you have to basically draw the whole mouth um, kind of cut in half so that it will allow you to manipulate the mouth expressions. So what I've done, I have the overall look that I want for my character. And now I'm trying to match um, match my character up with all the angles. So, so far for the zero degree angle, I have already taken time out to split my jawline so that I can work on the mouth expressions. And what I would like to do is first go into it. And as you can see, I only have one frame. If you go to the next frames, um, they don't exist. But I do know for this mouth expression, I created 31 expressions. So I'm going to go back and to save a ton of time, I'm going to highlight up to 31 and I'm going to tell it to convert into a keyframe, not a blank keyframe, but a regular keyframe um, to make all of these have the exact same expressions. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if you're in Flash, when I'm working with expressions so I can see it on the main timeline, I transfer um, each of those um, expressions instead of into a, a movie clip, I flip it down and transfer it to a graphic. And the reason why is because it will let me manipulate them on the main timeline versus having to drill into it each time. So I'm gonna go back to frame one. And frame one is good because if I add my guys back, and this is just a guide, let me see where my jawline starts for each one of my angle views and where it ends. What I want to do now is focus solely on the jawlines matching up for this angle because I've already created all of my mouth expressions with this angle. I'm not gonna focus on the actual expression his face is making. I'm gonna focus on what's going on with his jawline. So as you can see here, the jawline shrinks. Wherever it shrinks at, I'm gonna use my guide first to transfer it to that angle. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to make this a graphic as well. And I'm going to go to frame two. And I'm going to make the adjustment. 
actually, wait a minute, I did that wrong. Let me go back out. I need to go inside of it, go to frame two, which I'm currently on, and then make my facial expression. So you go to frame one, it's down here, frame two, it's up here. Now, instead of boring you doing every single angle, I am going to fast forward um, on this and just make all the modifications really quickly to my jawline and then come back. Okay, so now that I have my jawline exactly where I want it for each one of my facial expressions, now the only thing I have to do is um, focus on actually drawing the expressions versus um, trying to make sure everything lines up. I know that now when I draw my mouth expression over top of my jawline, everything else will fall into place. So that was the front view angle, and I'm not going to go over um, the exact same steps with the side view angle because I think you get the picture. The only thing that I'm noticing that I don't like is that um, my jawline kind of has a bend to it and then it goes down. Uh -oh. uh, and that's the same for the front angle has kind of like a bend to it and then it kind of goes down but I notice on my side view angle it just kind of goes straight for curve it's no it's no little bend and then it comes down so I think the, the main thing I'm going to do is try to fix that let me stop and put on my my glove because I was not prepared to draw and this is basically the jawline right here just in the outline mode i'm doing a new layer and i've locked this layer because i want to first get the look that i want and then modify my jawline to match so it's kind of doing this kind of thing i just want to make sure that it's kind of dropping all at the same place and um, well, let me clear these guys real quick. So the jawline is kind of starting its slope at about right here at the other two angles. So what I drew right here would be incorrect. I may be able to quickly modify it. So it should drop right there. However, this portion is incorrect. So I think that is a little more accurate to the other two jawline expressions. And since I kind of have the line that I want, hopefully it's the correct thickness, I'm going to enable this back again and kind of erase this over there already and paste in place and see what I have.
Oh, actually, I didn't paste it on the same. Let's see. As you can see, it's definitely some cleanup I need to do. Okay. And the main reason why I zoomed in and did so much um, cleanup with the jawline was because I wanted to make sure that... Um, if I'm going to duplicate the same jawline expression over and over again, I'm working with a nice, clean jawline to begin with so that I won't have to go through and make changes to each individual mouth expression um, as I get further into it. Now, the other thing I've noticed, I like the jawline back here. But what I don't like is the chin here. My chin seems to be a little bit more pointier and here it just seems to be round so once again I I need to do some work so I want to move this over where I can kind of see both of them together and once again I'm going to put it in outline mode for the bottom of the chin I'm going to kind of give myself a guide on where it should stop. Okay, we we'll use this one. And um, my goal will be to try to keep the same look, but fix the chin up in a way second yeah in a way that it complements the character like it does in the other angles okay so I think that's the right chin I'm looking for for my character. So now that I have the line work the way I want, I'm going to cut it off the second layer and pretty much just try to erase um, my jawline here so that, that I can paste the new one on that same layer and just color it in. All right, so now that we have a much better jawline, let's just zoom out. And I think that looks much better. So now that we have the drawdown that we want, I can go ahead and delete this layer. Keep in mind, this is the um, this is where all of your expressions will be at for your side view angle. So when I go inside this layer, I want to keep this same um, format type and just now go. 31 ankles like I did before and convert them to keyframe animations. Now, unlike, well, actually I can do that. 
to save time. No, I'll leave it alone because I don't want to manipulate it. So these haven't been converted into symbols yet and it's perfectly fine. It will allow me to draw over top of each expression and to save time, I will not do the same steps that I just did with the front angle. I'm just going to simply um, skip to some of the other things I want to modify um, within my character rig. So this concludes this part of the tutorial.